Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition where once again it has been what, like two weeks since I've played or so. Uh, so I have no idea what we had done last time uh, but I watched the video, video back and we talked to Rex, Liara, and Caden as far as I can tell. I didn't watch the whole thing obviously because I would rather play the game. <laughs> But I think we need to talk to Ashley, Garrus, and Taddy. And then we should be good to go. Because we just did Pharaohs. And we finally... Oh my gosh, look at all these. Look at all these things we've done. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Get ready. We just, we just did um, one main mission. So now it's time. <laughs> Although, honestly, I thought... I thought once you did... Like, any of the two combos, or like, Liara, Noveria, Liara, Pharos. I'm not sure if you could do like, Noveria, Pharos, and not Liara. Um, but... That... Then the game would like, trigger... The like sort of final planet and you could actually go to that like really early maybe I'm misremembering and it's triggered by something else but I swear it like shows up at some point and you can like you can like skip like a whole planet or something mm -hmm. Mm. I don't think you could do it without we are not I think about it Cause she's like the one who's like yo here's how you do stuff let me mind meld with you. Anyway, get ready for a bunch of side quests. I don't know. Every, not everybody. Several people seem to at least be watching those videos <laughs> where I <laughs> do the side quests. And by the way, I just want to say thank you forever to the people who comment on like every video. You're the best. <laughs> like, you don't have to comment on every video, but legit, it makes my day. I mean, I'm like, oh good. People like it. Like, I don't know. Like, people are watching it, obviously. I can see the numbers, but it's still, like, it's really nice. So I appreciate it. I'm not trying to guilt trip, obviously. I'm just saying thank you to the people who do that, or even just irregularly. I appreciate it a lot. Anyway. Let's talk. Commander. Um, how we doing? What's your opinion of the last mission? Gotta admire those colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. I forget how beautiful everything is. Like, wow. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, mm. we saw Caden in a news vid about mm. the Normandy. <laughs> He's cute. Later, sis. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Caden! Hmm. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet. He! What's up? He didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Tell me. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. This part, this whole thing, Ashley's family thing, makes it extremely relatable to me. I am the oldest of several sisters. All girls. There's five of us? Five of us total. And I don't know how many siblings she's got, technically. I think she's got, like, at least two sisters that she names. Um, anyway, it... This part made me like Ashley more, because I was like, oh, okay. Like, I, she's got more to her than, you know... I don't know. Her flaws, I guess you could say. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah. Took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above serviceman third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. <laughs> it's just like one of those, like, I don't know, it's one of those, like, heartbreaking, or like, not heartbreaking, I guess, like, it's sort of heartbreaking, but also, like, a very, like, like, when you watch the video, I don't want to cry, but, like, not for, like, sad reasons, uh, but for heartfelt ones, just watch, um, dogs reacting to their, like, owner coming back from like a tour of duty like a military tour you know <gasps> it's gonna make me cry just thinking about it anyway i don't that 
that's not exact that's not exactly the same thing obviously here but um i don't know why actually i talked about that but um oh just like heartfelt crying i guess <laughs> but uh yeah anyway what about your mother you haven't mentioned her you must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. And that's just... Mm, and it's, it's... It's so frustrating. It doesn't have to be like that, but like... I don't, I don't know. That's a complicated issue, but like... She's a planetary geologist. I... I it's... As long as you're happy, right? As long as you're happy. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, mm. then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. Okay. With four girls, four dad girls, used to yeah. say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Yeah, my dad said something similar. <laughs> Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. Funnily enough, I was not in the military. My family wasn't in the military, but we also moved a bunch. Uh, so again, this is another thing. I, I don't know. Me and like my sisters weren't necessarily like we always got on each other's nerves, you know. But like you always had you always had each other's backs, you know. So I don't know. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? <laughs> Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. <laughs> vid mails? Like, what's that? Boys, no control. It's true. Freaking. <laughs> Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple of years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen hell why away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deal. In the woods? She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. What? I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It's rough. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. Uh, I have encountered a similar situation before, and it, it is something where I feel like it should be reported because it can protect other girls, but it is a very big sacrifice to make being the girl doing the reporting because oftentimes other little girls, like teenage girls, will start to like be like, mm, well, you know, like they get all catty at you, like thinking you just want attention, whereas who in the world wants attention like that, you know? Like, it's... And there's a lot going on, I don't, I don't know, probably by the time this video goes up, there's a lot going on in the gaming world. There always is, like, once a year, something, or more, something big happens right now. It's the Activision Blizzard thing. So it's just fresh on the brain, you know? But it's just, like, being the one doing the reporting is, is a burden to bear. And not doing it doesn't make you a bad person. It means, like, you've weighed... You have to take care of yourself, you know, you it's good to take care of other people like I highly recommend it And it can also protect yourself to report, but it can also put you right in the firing squad, you know So that's kind of her thing here It seems like is that she doesn't want and the person I know that I'm very close to had to uh, Deal with small town stuff, too, you know, so it's just but in the end we ended up reporting it that one um, and and she had to deal with kind of the fallout from that, you know, despite it being, I think, the best. And it was her call to make. We specifically did say, 
Uh, I guess it was one of my sisters and me and the other sisters who were like ready to go to war, you know, we like kind of gave our opinions, but we said it's in your court, you know, and in the end she did decide to report it and so I still, uh, <laughs> obviously not all boys are terrible little dirtbags, but why are so many of them? <laughs> it's just, just be a decent person, please. <laughs> anyway. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword, but she always was a little weird. Likes big screws <laughs> and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. <laughs> That's actually so awesome. I forgot about that. <laughs> like swords and skirts and things you gotta tie her into. Big Victorian dresses with a sword. What a woman. Actually, the sister of mine that did have an issue with a boy, we ended up, uh, me and the th older girls got together, and we bought her a sword. <laughs> Not something she could carry around, but one that she could hang on the wall and feel like, you know, feel powerful about. I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. It's something she had been wanting for a while, too, and we read books about lady knights growing up, and, you know, like, it's just one of those things. A sword's just very, can be very empowering. <laughs> so, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand to hand. Mm hmm. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone. Oh, so she did. did. Tell. He wasn't happy. She's not a police I report. To snap him in half. But Sarah gave me this look. This let me handle it. I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. Ah. When he swung, she just she wasn't there anymore. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was gonna end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Ugh, it's just such a... It makes me, like, get all teary-eyed. I'm like, hell yeah. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. <laughs> Man, if there's any way to get straight to me, my heart, it's through uh, established poetry. I friggin' love it. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a hundred <laughs> doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. <laughs> Just don't spread it around. <laughs> Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on Skipper. He's with God now. That's not of course a problem it's not a... with you, is it? That I believe in God? It's not a problem at all, as long as you're not a dick about it, you know? Everyone has the right to believe what they want. Says so in the Alliance Charter, only with fancier words. I'm glad you're open-minded about it. I've met a few people who are really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? 
I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. No, I think, I think, I don't know. She make she makes a good point in an interesting way. Like, I don't know. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. I, I feel her. I feel what she's saying there in, in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, Garrus and then... Command, how are you? Are, did we have this already? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. I don't think we've had this conversation. And if we have, I've forgotten it. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. Mm. There's actually a comic about Garrus and his dad. There's like two comics? One comic? No, one comic. And it is a little bit of Garrus, like Garrus and dad backstory. And then um, it takes place technically, like it's a little bit of like uh, flashbacks and stuff. And then it is because Garrus is in a particular predicament that we will see him in in Mass Effect 2, actually. Um, and it's actually real sweet between the two of them. I I highly recommend getting that new newish, I guess, comic omnibus that came out earlier this year, I think, or last year. No, I think it came out at the very end of last year, because uh, I think I got it for Christmas. Um, but yeah, it has all the comics in one giant book, which is nice. So uh, and it was like thirty bucks, forty bucks max. Like I don't even think it was forty bucks. I think it was like between like twenty and thirty. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend it. It's really, it's really good. I read them all. They're great. You were asked to be a Spectre. Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other. Directors. So much for them not being like I made. Special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. Unlimited power. Wouldn't like you, Commander. Ah. No offense. Well, it's a good thing I'm not romancing you this playthrough, and I don't have to try to get my father-in-law's love. Uh, I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. Well, yeah. Saren's not going to play by our rules, C-Sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. That's not. I mean, it's interesting here. Like, you, like you get to have like a little bit of a the sway on Garrus's like motivations and stuff, sort of, or like his thought process. I guess he's very um susceptible to manipulation right now <laughs> which kind of makes me go feel bad <laughs> just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should i don't need to stoop to saren's level to stop him and neither do you garris that's a good way to put it i see what you mean but i'll think about it like Thanks. sometimes rules are set in place by people who don't know anything right like politicians and like you know people who are more concerned with their own gain um, so you want to break those rules sometimes, I guess. You could look at it that way. But they're usually in place for a freaking reason, you know? And, like, if you need to break it, it needs to be, like, an emergency. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it can't just be, like, this will make it easier. It's, like, it needs to be, like, a big deal. I don't know. Oh, hello, Shepard. Oh, that's wrong! Are you okay? Don't be sad! I don't know. Your ship is amazing. And your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? Put a fan on. The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. That would be hard to sleep, right? But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of 
kind of miss them. That's kind of why they send you on these sorts of things, right? Is because, like, you grow up with something, and you're like, oh, I'm so sick of it, I want to do something else. And then you get out in the wider world, and you're like, oh, jeez. And, like, you'd want, you just want to go, not always, but, you know, a part of you wants to go back to the familiar. Or, like, maybe after, like, a few months or a year or something, you kind of are like, oh, hey, I would like to go back to what I know and understand, <laughs> you know? Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. Oh, it's something bad happened to them. Because nobody likes Koreans for some reason, even though they're awesome. Uh, well, I know why they don't like them. Because they're space racists. <laughs> Uh, and they blame this generation uh, for of Koreans for the sins of their predecessors, which is just not fair, truly. But, um, yeah, I wonder if the pilgrimage is like she says, right? Where it's like, it, not only does the pilgrimage allow you to get like a viewpoint on like other cultures and other peoples and stuff, but it gives you another way to look back at your own culture and people, right? Through a different lens, maybe. Oh, jeez, I don't remember which one we were on. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Well, Shy Pilgrimage. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach Maturin, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. I wonder if, like, you get asked, like, hey, you want to join our crew or something like that, too. Like, it probably does happen, but I don't think she mentions it. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good right. impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Like, yeah, you could bring a substandard gift, but you're not going to get a good position on that ship that you're trying to like. And, the, and maybe they'll take it, even though it's a substandard gift, right? You're like, haha, I did it, but you're not going to be like, you know given probably a lot of responsibility or prestige or whatever have a high standing in that ship because they're like your gifts suck <laughs> I can't believe they just send you off alone it's not like they just cast us out before we leave we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla and given gifts to help us on our journey we also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. What an interesting system, and I have, I just, I can't believe that, like, most of them come back, <laughs> like, honestly, like, it seems like it would be really difficult. And what if some of them get stuck? I think we meet a Quarian and two, actually, who gets kind of stuck and, like, can't leave where he's at, you know? And another one, we actually meet another one in two, and she's stuck. She's big time stuck. But in a different way. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Uh, have we talked about the Geth? I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. 
All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Tell me, I don't think we've talked about this. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. Dun, dun, dun. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Hive mind. Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. It's like, it's actually not a hype. I make that joke, but it's not exactly why. So there's some sort of group consciousness. No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. I don't get I mean, it's not that hard, but like, yeah, like, it explains it pretty well. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Yeah, I'm like, why? I mean, I could see it being like, whoa, like if a computer started asking me that, you know, like a quantum computer or whatever, I'd be like, whoa. But they, they definitely knee-jerk react in the wrong direction. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. So we tried to kill them all off! The newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up or, against us. Or so we acted first. you could just talk and to them! Order went out across all Quarian controlled systems to this permanently is... deactivate all Geth. So they were going to murder them the instead! Geth responded to this order violently. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh no, they're maybe sentient, so let's just kill them all. And like, plus, like your whole economy would collapse at this point. Like, just give them a union or something, you know? <laughs> and like, make actual machines machines to do the manual labor stuff. Like, they're like, oh no, we don't want to use them as slaves, so we'll kill them. It's like, oh my gosh, calm down. Hey, you can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. Yeah, yeah, you did! The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. 
We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. What? Ah! But we did not make a mistake when we went to war. Those the are Earth. flipped. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. Mm, what the hell? They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's Cause, ever tried to contact them? Because their original organic beings that they knew tried to kill them off for becoming self-aware. <laughs> they didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. I I should go. See you later. See you later, Tally. Now, Tally. Tally is not. There's, 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 there's information that is lacking that many of us who have played Mass Effect Two and Three know. No, especially Three, that Tally does not yet know. So keep an eye on this space, <laughs> and, and you'll learn as we go. But anyway, I'm going to call this one here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to get the last of Tally stuff. Oh, and here we go. I'm also now going to start implementing or integrating, I guess, the, the Patreon shoutouts uh, in a more integrated way. Um, but... So I wanted to say thank you really quick to Reese Galito and Scalamunger who are sapling um, patrons. Patrons. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you guys very much. I'm giving you your own individual. That's, that's, the, that's one of the rewards for tier two and tier three. Uh, and in tier three, at the tree level, uh, we have the magnificent Christopher. Uh, I want to say thank you to you so much <laughs> i appreciate it i appreciate i appreciate all of you you guys are great um and as this is as uh was the date the 26th of uh, july uh so because i have to record a bunch of these in advance if anybody else by perchance adds themselves on i'll try to give you i'll try to add in shout outs because i have to record and edit in large batches it may be a, a later date but regardless thank you again to my patrons i appreciate you guys very much like so much <laughs> so uh thank you guys again for watching and i'll see you in the next one